The first question that I, I like to ask, because I think it's yeah. the most important one, is what's a documentary to you? What's a documentary to me? That's interesting because there's sort of an ongoing bait, debate about whether or not documentaries are opinion pieces, personal takes on something, journalism in some cases. To me, a documentary is essentially a point of view. If everything is a point of view piece, wouldn't that be the case for any kind of film? Because ultimately, a filmmaker has to insert their point of view in what they're creating. It. I think, in a way, that's true. Um, but I think when you're dealing with fiction or narrative, you're in a completely different world. And in a documentary, you know, you're in the nonfiction world. The ultimate way that I describe it when I talk to students and other things is that a documentary shows a truth that you may not have known. So it shows something. It could be something someone did or said, or you could see another side of a famous person, you know, that you never, I mean, I think when, when uh, I produced An Inconvenient Truth, a lot of people didn't know that Al Gore was actually funny, and he's funny in the film in a few places, and he's funny all the time, but the media, you know, never captured that before. And so that truth about him was revealed in the film. Now, when you're looking at these different truths, these different things that occur during a mm -hmm. film, um, you're making a documentary, obviously a number of different elements come out that may change the direction. How do you decide on what changes you find, find to be the most compelling? You know, when I first started documentaries, I had heard from a bunch of different people that, you know, the doc as you're making the film, the documentary will present itself. And I thought, but we're in charge of making the film. How is the documentary just going to, you know, present itself to us? How is that going to happen? And it's such an interesting phenomenon. When you're being true to a story, you're following a character. And at the beginning, let's say you've written a treatment, and you're like, my idea is to follow this character as they're in this competition, for example. And you follow the character in the competition, but there's this thing in their personal life or at their business that's much more interesting. And you start the documentary, and you go off in a, in a completely different direction. Then when you try to stick elements of your original concept, or maybe things that you thought belonged in there, the film rejects them. It's just not as good. It's not as interesting. And that's kind of the magic of documentary filmmaking. So you can make your plans, and you should. You should make your plans. But you have to be prepared to uh, abandon them when these more interesting stories and these little truths start cropping up and presenting themselves. If you are showing them revealing certain truths, then you, you have to handle that in a dignified and responsible way and not an exploitive way. Now there are other types of documentaries that are more like gotcha situations where the director is actively interviewing a subject and trying to get them to reveal something, you know, that they, they wouldn't normally reveal. And that's a different type of film and that's that's okay as well. But I think that if, if, if you're of the opinion that you're revealing certain truths, then I think you have to reveal them. Sometimes they're not what you intended. You find things and you're like, that's not what I thought it would be. And you have to you know, follow that storyline. You can't just reject entire storylines because it doesn't fit with your preconceived notion. I mean, you could, but the film wouldn't be as good. Well, let's talk about Waiting for Superman then, when you guys were filming that. What was the preconceived notion or the notion that you came in with with your treatment? Yeah. And then where did you go to from there? Our treatment ended up being very different from the film. We had an expectation that we would be doing a lot of like on the ground investigative work ourselves. And when we looked into it, it turned out that there were studies on every subject imaginable by McKinsey, by you know Rand, by everyone who's been trying to figure out for the last 30 years how to fix the education system. But what seemed to be missing from most of these analyses and studies were what does it mean for kids? So um, there was an article in the New York Times about a lottery. And Davis came in and read it, and we all read it. And it ended up being the perfect metaphor for you know, how ironic is it that for these certain kids, the only good school in their neighborhood was too crowded, and they could only get in by the luck of the draw. And this is supposed to be the land of choice, the land of 20 different kinds of washing powder and 30 different kinds of peanut butter and all that, and yet there's no choice on education. So that metaphor ended up being the guiding principle for Waiting for Superman. 